Welcome to the Old Time Radio Netcast Network. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Shadow, original air date September 24th, 1939, and the title is Dead Men Talk. Hope you enjoy. moment, the shadow starts his first adventure of the new season. But first, let me tell you about this master of men's minds. The shadow, the serious character who furthers the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Cranston devotes his spare time to his favorite hobby, criminology. As the shadow, he is the sworn enemy of criminals, lawbreakers, and shopsters. An invaluable help to the shadow is his hypnotic power, by which he clouds men's minds so that they cannot see him. This he accomplishes by means of a mystic trick acquired during the years he spent in the Orient. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the unseen voice of the shadow belongs. Today's story, Dead Men Talk. Lamont. Lamont. Yeah. What? Look, darling, there's something I think you ought to know. Yes, what is it? Promise you won't tell anyone? Of course, Margot, of course. You just went through another red light. No. Sorry. You know, there's nothing duller or harder to be with than a crime detector when there's no crime to detect. Well, if you'd rather not be with I me... I know. I'd... You'd be very glad to take me home. The last time I heard that line was from a boy who was courting me to a high school prom. No, Margot. I should think you'd be happy that our fair city has no murders and no robberies, no corruption at the moment. Well, I am. Of course, if you really want a victim... Why don't you track down the villain who put the tax on cigarettes? Listen, my sweet. You can go to your psychology teacher and get your money back because you haven't helped my mood one bit. Okay, then. Go ahead and sulk. Would you mind telling me where we're headed for? The morgue. You mean the... I mean the morgue. I see. Of course, if you'd rather not come with me. No, no. In fact, after spending this day with you, the morgue will be a pleasant relief. Glad to see you, Mr. Cranston. Oh, how are you, Mr. Tuttle? I, uh, I'd like you to meet Miss Lane. Well, glad to meet you, Miss Lane. How do you do? Mr. Tuttle is our very efficient keeper of the morgue. I see. <laughs> yes, Miss Lane. And we're open for business here 24 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody in particular you were looking for, Mr. Cranston? No, no, you're just driving by, and I thought I'd drop in and see what was going on. Well, business is very slow right now. Very slack. But I suppose that's true of every business. But we did have a new one today, an old derelict uh, died of pneumonia exposure, I guess. <laughs> there he is over there. Oh, yes. Yeah, poor chap. Rather well, nice-looking old boy, isn't he? Is he the only new one? <laughs> yes, up to now. But uh, stick around. <laughs> you know the old saying, you never know what's going to turn up, eh, Miss Lane? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Come on, let's get out of here. That uh, Tuttle's an interesting type, don't you think? Yes. Yes, very. A jolly sort. Oh, Margo, I'll park here. Will you tell him we want the evening news, please? Yes, sir. Boys. Yes, miss? Evening news, please. Uh, here you are. Evening news it is. Thank you. Read all about... What do the headlines say? Well, the steamship Bremen has been seen in Chicago wearing a long white beard. Oh, very funny. Very funny. What about local news? Well, let's see. Football team shopping, um, movie hero goes on. Nope. Nope, nothing new. Oh, why doesn't something happen? Good evening, Miss Lane. Mr. Cranston. How are you, Mr. Harvey? Uh, hello, Harvey. Say, how are things at the bank? Well, just fine, thank you. Had any good robberies lately? Oh, we've been... What? <laughs> skip it, skip it. So long, Harvey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... 
Well, I feel like Sherlock Holmes must have felt when Conan Doyle stopped writing him. Where to now? Mm, we're going to dinner. Oh, no. Well, why not? Well, you're not going to give up so soon, Lamont. You know, we can still chase ambulances. Oh. <laughs> Margo, may I see that newspaper, please? Now, you finish your salad first, Lamont. <laughs> okay, Charlie. Whatever you say. Hey, you've gotten yourself an idea, haven't you? Uh-huh. What is it? Well, I've just been thinking. You know the old saying that uh, if there's no news, then make news? Yes. Well, how about a rewrite on that? If there's no crime... Then make crime? Exactly. Just a minute. You're not going out and commit a murder. <laughs> Hardly. I have a different approach. What? Our well-known civic leader, Mr. Grant Flynn. Oh. Mr. Flynn, the poor man's friend, benefactor of little kitties. And the worst murdering thief this community has ever known. But, Lamont, they've been trying for years to hang something on Flynn. Granted. But just look at this newspaper. See this story here. Whereabouts of John Gordon, racket king, still a mystery. But what's that got to do with Flynn? John Gordon was Flynn's partner. Oh, not publicly, of course. Gordon did the dirty work. He ran the racket, collected the extortion money from poor shopkeepers, and, uh, when necessary, committed the murders. Well, what's happened to Gordon? About three weeks ago, he disappeared. Boom. Just like that. And nothing's been heard of him since. Well, do you think that Flynn had something to do with his disappearance? Definitely. Gordon was becoming too dangerous to Flynn's interests. Their names were being linked together. And Gordon was trying to cut in on Flynn's political interests. And uh, probably threatened him. And you think that Flynn had Gordon murdered? Well, I'm not so sure of that. Uh, the murdered part, I mean. What I do think is... That Flynn ordered him done away with. And now he's not so sure that his orders were carried out. But why? Because among those heading the investigation as to Gordon's whereabouts is his erstwhile partner, the same Mr. Flynn. Oh. And just what are you planning to do about all this? Well, if Mr. Flynn were to receive a phone call telling him that Gordon was still alive, we might stir up some interesting developments. I see. Particularly... If he were to receive this phone call from the shadow. Come in. Well, what do you want? Phone call for you, Mr. Flynn. Well, who is it? He wouldn't give no name. You know I don't talk to people unless... He says he's got a message for you. Oh, yes? Yeah, from uh, Johnny Gordon. What? Should I tell him your name? No, no, no. No, I'll take it. Now, you wait in here. Whatever you say, boss. Whatever you say. Hello. 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 Mr. Grant Flynn? Yes? <laughs> this is the shadow. The shadow? Hey, I've heard of you. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. I have a message for you that might be of some importance. Oh, uh, yes? A message from John Gordon. What do you mean from Gordon? Gordon is coming to get you. Gordon's dead. How do you know? Because I ordered him rubbed out. I... That's oh, I, I all mean... I wanted to know, Mr. No, I didn't Flynn. mean that. You hear me? I, I didn't mean that. Perhaps you can explain yourself more clearly in the morning at the district attorney's office. If Gordon doesn't get you first. Uh, no, wait a minute. Wait. Good night, Mr. Flynn. <laughs> hey, good morning, Margot. Lamont, have you seen the newspapers? No. Well, look at this. Civic leader dies suddenly. Grant Flynn, pneumonia victim. What? Pneumonia? Fired at 9 p.m. last night hey, at no, his wait home. A I spoke to Flynn at 8.45. That means he contracted pneumonia, reached a crisis, and died in 15 minutes flat. Hmm. Remarkable age we're living in, isn't it? Yes, to say the least. To say the least, there's something very phony about the whole thing. Let me see that paper. Here you are. Yeah. At his family's request, the funeral services will be strictly private. The body will be removed to Conrad's undertaking parlors this evening. Well, you can be certain of one thing, Margot. What's that? The services won't be strictly private. Because we're paying our respects to the late Mr. Flynn at the funeral parlor ourselves tonight. Lamont. <laughs> Not so loud, Margot. Is this better? Yeah. I'm not too curious. Why are we prowling up this back alley? This is the rear of the funeral parlor. 
And as we aren't among the invited mourners, I thought this was the best way in. Do you mind? No, it's fun. I haven't done this since Prohibition. <laughs> well, here's the door. Now we'll see if I have a key to fit it. <laughs> what the well-dressed burglar will wear. How you fix the brass knuckles. Margot, could you stop being a bright girl for just a minute, please? All right. Well, thanks. Now, I'll try this one. No. This one. Ah, there we are. Come on. Quiet now. All right. Give me that flashlight. Hmm. Well, this seems to be the storeroom for the coffins. Yes, I gather that from the way they're stacked up around here. You're not nervous, are you? No, no. I was just wishing you were back in that jolly old morgue. <laughs> Come on. Let's try this door over here. Stay close to me. Don't worry about that. Ah, uh-huh. this must be the funeral room. Now to find Mr. Flynn. <laughs> What's the matter? Over there in the corner, something's moving. Oh, yeah. Here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a curtain blowing. Stop being so nervous. Nothing can possibly... What was that? I don't know. Someone's coming down the stairs. Quick, duck behind this coffin. Oh, okay, come on, let's get out of here. There is really no need of hiding. Come out from behind that coffin. <clears throat> Why, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's better. We, uh, we're very close friends of Mr. Flynn's, and, uh... <laughs> I know it may seem very unusual to you, our being here at this hour, but... It was the late, Mr. Flynn, you wanted to see. Yes. Follow me. Stay beside me, Lamont. All right. Sorry, I haven't time to show you all around. You'd like it here. Yes, I'm sure we would. Mr. Flynn, wasn't it? Yes. I haven't gotten to know him very well yet. He's new here. Ah, here he is. Now, would you help me with this coffin lid? Surely. There he is. Ah, the piece. The piece they find. Are you sure this is Mr. Grant Flynn? Yes. See the engraving on the coffin? His family just left here a short time ago. Thank you. Come on, Margo. Leaving so soon? Yes, good night. Hope you weren't frightened. What's the matter, Lamont? That body. That body in the coffin. Yes. That isn't Grant Flynn. No? No. It's the body of that poor old derelict we saw yesterday in the morgue. been a merry world. First the morgue, then an undertaking parlor, then the morgue again. Well, we found out one thing. Flynn is definitely still alive. But where he is and why he so desperately pretended to be dead is something we've got to unravel. Oh, what do you think you'll learn at the morgue? I want to find out who removed the body of the old derelict. Do you think they'll tell you? Not me, Margot. But they will tell the shadow. Because I cloud men's minds by the power of hypnosis. <laughs> now, now, look, this talk is a scary enough place at night, so cut it out, will you? I... Let me assure you that I am not here to frighten anyone, Mr. Tuttle. Unless, of course, you fail to give me the information I desire. Well, well, uh, uh, what, what's that? Who took that old man's body out of here? Old, o- old man? Why, I... You're stalling, Tuttle. I haven't much time to waste with you. Answer my question. No, I don't know nothing about it. Flynn can't protect you now, Tuttle. Flynn? Yes, Flynn. 
He claimed that body, didn't he? Oh, why, I... Didn't he? Oh, uh, yes, yes. But I was just obeying orders. Honest, I was up. Lynch got me this job. That's I... all I wanted to know. Oh, you will tell him I squealed, will you? No, Tuttle. But I'd stand by tonight if I were you. You may be sent another body. In exchange. What do you mean? I mean the body of your erstwhile boss, Mr. Flynn. This evening's paper, did you, Lamont? No. Why, Margo? Well, here's an item that might interest you. Sometime last night, the private vault of the late Grant Flynn in the First Security Bank was rifled and the entire contents removed. I might have known it. Remember that chap Harvey I spoke to last night when we bought the paper? Yes. He's been a trusted Flynn employee for years. Although he works for the First National Bank, he, he undoubtedly did the rifling. Oh, well, the clock thickens, huh? Sleepy? Not exactly bright at 2.30 in the morning. Oh, remember those good old days when nothing was happening? <laughs> Remotely. What's up now, Chief? Another fire? I can take you home if you want. Not a chance. Where to now? A visit to Mr. Harvey. Harvey? Yes, chap at the bank. If we were to find out where he delivered the contents of the vault, it might lead us to Flint. <laughs> Wake up, Harvey. Mm-hmm. I said, wake up. Right away. Mm-hmm. What? I want to talk to you, Harvey. Who's speaking to me? Right. Right beside you. Here in the shadows. Well, put on a light. No one here. I must be dreaming. You weren't dreaming, Harvey. What? Don't try to look for me. You won't see me. But I'm still right beside you. See? Wait. You see the shadow. Man, nobody can see. That's right. Well, what do you want to be? Harvey, why did you break into Grant Flynn's vault? Me, what? And where did you deliver the contents of that vault? Please, you made a dreadful mistake. Answer my questions, Harvey. I can't. I can't tell you anything. You're a fool, Harvey. Do you know that your knowledge that Grant Flynn is still alive is your own death warrant? No. That body no. they took from the morgue and placed in Flynn's coffin. They'll have to replace that body. Did you know that, Harvey? And oh. do you know whose body they'll use as a substitute? Yours, Harvey. Yours. All right, I'll talk. You've got to protect me. You can't let them kill me. I promise you that. Now, where is Flint? I delivered the papers to him at his own warehouse down on the riverfront. I think he's planning to make a getaway sometime tonight. <laughs> Careful looking place. Lamar, what that board is structured beside it? Uh, that, my dear, is what is affectionately known to the taxpayers of our community as Flynn Folly. Flynn Folly. Excuse me, I vaguely recall that name. It's the title that was bestowed on the vehicular tunnel that was built under the river by Flynn with public funds, and then never you. Hmm. You must have made something on that little deal. Mm-hmm. Millions. Yeah, I think it's best that we leave the car here, Margo. We'll look for a door in the rear of the building. Come on. Okay, Chief. Oh, I never liked this neighborhood even in the daytime. No one about at this hour. Now if we can only... Fo- ah, here's the door. Now to get... I don't know, those keys again. These keys are very precious, my sweet. I realize that. But wouldn't it be fun to just ring a doorbell once in a while? Yeah. yeah. There we are. The first one. Right. Let me have the flashlight. Yeah. Oh, the flashlight. Yes, yes, the flashlight. Hurry. I I left it in the car. What? You did? Well, that's fine. Oh, I'm sorry, Lamont. I can go back. No, no, no. Never mind. We'll use matches. Stay right behind me. Right behind you. There. Look, Lamont. There's a flight of stairs in the corner. Good. That's what I was looking for. See, I've heard that Flynn has maintained a hideaway here for years. Upstairs on top of the warehouse. Well, he's up there now. There's only one way to find out. Now, you wait here. Wait here? Yes, it'll be much safer. If I'm not back downstairs in 15 minutes, I want you to get in the car and go to the police headquarters. You can tell Commissioner Weston our whole story. Oh, Lamont, don't you think you ought to send for Weston? Now? I should say not. Well, see you in a few minutes, honey. Yes, sir. See you in a few minutes. And don't worry. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. 
Never could whistle. Oh, dear. Something wrong, lady? Who's that? No, no, don't get alarmed. Take that flashlight out of my eyes. I can't see you. That's the idea. Who are you? Oh, sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Lynn. Frank Lynn? Yes. The man that your friend has gone upstairs to find. <laughs> Won't he be surprised when he comes back and finds you gone? Gone? What do you mean? You see, you're coming with me. Oh, let go of me. That fellow when you came in here. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, it's sealed up at both ends. And the, and the rest of it buried in the river. Oh, you can't. You can't. Now, that's a mop of you, sister. Don't you wait till you get down in the tunnel and you can scream all you want, then. Come on, now. Now, you go right through this tunnel on the wall. I can't. Stop fighting me. I'm on. I'm on. It's too late now, sister. <laughs> You haven't told me how you liked it down here in the tunnel yet, lady. It's awful. Oh, now you get used to it. After you're here a while, the water dripping from the walls and the cats running around. Why, you won't want anything else. You can't keep me down here. Oh, no. This will be a lesson to you and your inquisitive friend to keep out of other people's business. Well, I hate to be leaving you, but... I don't think you are leaving, Mr. Flynn. Uh, who is that? I believe we've talked before. I... Shadow. Shadow, how did you get here? I followed you down here, and I've come for you. I believe that Police Commissioner Weston will be very interested in the phenomena of a dead man Listen. come to life. Listen, even if I can't see you, you aren't scaring me. Scaring seems to be your specialty, Flynn. No one's turning me in. I'm dead. See, legally dead. Come on, Flynn. Oh, no, you don't. This is the one case that Shadow failed on. Oh, he's thrown the back right away. Can you see anything? No. But it sounds like he's running down the tunnel toward the river. We must follow him quickly. Head there, Margot. A shaft of light. Come on. Careful, Margot. Shaft of light. Come on. Careful, Margot. Draw the tunnel here is covered with slime. Oh, the monster. <laughs> I thought you'd be fools enough to follow me here. We have you trapped this time, Flynn. Oh, yes? That's what you think. You see this lever right by my hand? That's a valve, see? A valve that'll let water roll into this tunnel at hundreds of tons a minute. Now, you may be just a voice, Shadow, but you can die like the rest of it. And that goes for your girlfriend, too. Well, don't you think you're being stupid, Mr. Flynn? Remember, you're trapped, too. Oh, yes, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead already. You can't hurt me. <laughs> don't touch that spell, Flynn. Who was that? Look, oh, a lot of Flynn's feet crawling along the ground. It's a man. Three weeks ago, I was a man, lady. Three weeks ago, I was brought into this Old and left to die. Three weeks ago, I was John Gordon. Gordon? The missing John Gordon. But you can't be Gordon. You're dead. I ordered you killed and your body thrown down here. Yeah. No trigger man's a bum shot, Flynn, but I'm not. You want a practical demonstration? Now wait, Gordon. Put down that gun or I'll pull this bell. You haven't got guts enough. Keep away from me. Put that gun away. I'm the one that'll do something, lady. Come and get it, Flynn. <laughs> Lamont! Lamont! Steady, Mother. Will I see what's up? Why? They're both dead. Gordon, too? Yes. He should have died days ago down here. The only thing that kept him alive was the hope of getting Flynn. Oh, horrible. I suppose the next thing to do is to notify Commissioner Weston. Yes, he could. Margot, look! What? Water! Water coming in through that valve. Oh, Lamont. Flynn must have turned it on. Come on, Margot. Quickly, quickly. Yeah. Here's a passageway. Oh, sorry. Let's get up these stairs. Yeah. Door. Oh. That was a close call. Oh. Well, what do we do now? Well, we'll notify the city department that the tunnel is flooded. But, uh... For telling Commissioner Weston about Flynn and Gordon. Well, perhaps it's just as well that he never knows. Are you tired? Well, it has been a busy day. You like to go home? Mm-hmm. But stop off at the bookstore first, will you? The bookstore? Yes, darling. I want to rest my nerves by curling up in bed with a very gory mystery story. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed this presentation from the Old Time Netcast Network. For more great shows, go to otnetcast.com. Don't forget to like and rate this episode in your favorite podcatching client. Follow this show on Facebook by going to otnetcast.com forward slash Facebook. This episode is covered under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otnetcast.com forward slash copyright. Thanks again for listening, and I hope you have a great day.